How safe is Ecuador? Let's talk about that. Here's your story, let's begin. The world is fine, come on, dive in. The future's here, it's right before your eyes. Safety in Ecuador. That's tough to get a handle on. The question comes up, is it as safe as the U.S.? Well, where in the U.S.? I mean, Chicago? where you have 10 to 20 shootings a day. Rochester, New York, every year it's one of the top two or three friendliest cities in the country. You can drop your wallet and they'll chase you down and give it back to you. That actually happened to me. Where? In the country? And where in Ecuador? Are we talking about Guayaquil, the largest city? A couple million people? Um, Quito, Cuenca, well the video is about Cuenca, but comes up about Ecuador. So, it's hard to get a handle on the kind of question, but I get, what you're, I get where you're coming from with that. You want to know if you come here, if you should have to um, bring a bodyguard or get a permit for a machine gun. So, first of all, I'll mention a study, um, a global something or other. It's on Facebook. I'm sure you can find it. 2016, last year. And it rates the most dangerous to the most safe countries. And the U.S. was somewhere around 60 countries down as a moderately safe country. And Ecuador was, I think, 80, 88 maybe. The number one wasn't the safest. It was the most dangerous. So as you go down that scale, the safer you are. And Ecuador was 20 countries safer than the United States in that study. But it's also considered to be moderately safe. It's kind of in the, in the middle ground. We're going to focus on Cuenca, but much of what I, I bring up is going to really apply anywhere, actually any country. Cuenca has some crime. It's not a ton of it, but it's mostly of the theft variety. Things like rape and murder are almost non-existent. I think there were two murders last year. Primarily what you're going to get are people that come up from the coast or these crime syndicates, groups, gangs, I guess you'd say. Nothing that formal. They come up from the coast. They're primarily out of Colombia and coast people. And they come to Cuenca because Cuenca is the wealthiest city in Ecuador. So if you're going to steal, you're going to go where the cash is. So what can, you do, what can you do to make a difference to minimize your exposure to crime? Well, it really depends on where you go, when you go, and how you look. And those are the things that are really going to make all the difference in the world. And keep in mind, Ecuador is a land of personal responsibility. You're responsible for taking care of yourself. If you, for example, a little off topic, but if you stumble on the sidewalk and fall on your face, you're not going to sue anybody. You should have been more careful. So, you know, keep that in mind. So, where, when, and how you look. Where? In Cuenca. You want to avoid certain places like Fiera Libra, the big, big market in the afternoon and in the evenings. Now I know you're going to get on Facebook and you're going to have a whole bunch of people that say, oh, it's safe, I'm there all the time, I never have a problem. The thing is, you don't have a problem until you do. And everybody that goes there isn't robbed. But we're talking about minimizing your risk. The criminals, for the most part, sleep in late. They go like to go out at night where they're not seen. And so they, they sleep in late. So if you go to the market in the morning or up to noon, so, you know, in that time there's a lot of people there and it's relatively safe because the criminals, ah, they're still in bed. But by the time you get to the afternoon and God forbid in the evening, that's where you run into a problem. You say, well, why would you go to the market in the evening? Well, I'm talking about that area. That general area is rife with criminals. And it's just, 
if you want to stay safe, just avoid places where we know they're going to be. And that's one of the places. Uh, another place, place is the bus terminal area. In the bus terminal, there's a lot of pickpockets, there's a lot of, I guess you'd say, grifters, that one will bump into you, the other one will, you know, grab what you have, they set up little scams. You can actually sit in there and see it go on, it happens so much. The police are pretty good about tracking them down, and the, if they look like somebody doesn't belong there, they'll, th they'll throw them out, and I, I give a lot of credit to them. But it's just an area. If you're going to catch a bus, you go there, you catch your bus. It's not a place to go and hang out. And the blocks around it uh, are also areas to avoid. There's a lot of drug prostitution, uh, cheap little hourly hotels in that area, if you get my drift on that. And these groups from the coast and the Colombians, they're not just there as a person to pick your pocket. They, they have little groups they like to use knives, guns when they can get them, and <clears throat> they're involved in whatever they can be involved in. Now, prostitution is legal in Ecuador, but from what I understand, it's run by uh, these criminal pimps, I guess, I guess you'd say, and they're in control of that. They're in control of drugs. Drugs isn't a big problem here, and the police are really hard on that, but uh, drugs exist everywhere. And so they have sources of revenue, and that would be pickpocketing, cell phone theft, drugs, prostitution, and that's what that's all about. And, and they hover in certain areas, and those are areas that you just want to avoid, particularly anything after 9 o'clock, anywhere, uh, in the center of town, unless you're with a group of friends or something like that. You just want to avoid it. Uh, it doesn't mean you can't go to El Centro at 11 o'clock at night, walk around, get a little meat stick, and watch people, and catch a taxi, and go home and be perfectly safe. You probably will be. But it's also the time when the criminals are out, and y you, know, you just want to be careful. So what's the point? You don't need to. Do that earlier in the day. Your look. The look is important. You don't want to dress touristy. Um, no Magnum PI Hawaiian shirts. You usually want to avoid these kind of hats. I just have it for the video. Um, you don't want to wear jewelry. Uh, I don't wear any anyway, but it's a good idea to not wear jewelry and certainly not gold and silver. Uh, diamonds. If you have that stuff, just, you know, pack it away. Flashy clothes, flashy shoes. You don't want to be a bum, but you, you definitely want to dress casual Friday. Um, you don't want to stand out as a target. You don't need to be flashing the latest model iPhone and holding it out for all to see. Um, you don't want to be carrying your laptop around and all these things you just need to avoid it. You don't really need to carry a wallet. Chances are you're going to lose it anyway. I, I swear it's like every couple weeks you're going to see somebody lost their wallet in a taxi. It slipped out of their pocket. Well, don't carry one. You can carry a copy of your cedula. You can carry the money that you need in your pocket. And you don't really need any more. The best thing to do with your debit card, because it's kind of a hassle getting it replaced, is only take your debit card when you're actually going to the ATM to draw something out. And then you take it back home and you put it away, and the money that you need for the day, figure out what you need, take twice that, and that's it. So if you're robbed, nobody's going to take your debit card, nobody's going to take your wallet, Nobody's going to take all extra credit cards. They're not going to have your ID. Um, you, why carry it around? Every time you go out, why carry that stuff around? You don't need it. If you need it, take it. Um, money belts are good. Go and be minimal. Just be what you need, and that's it. Be careful of the city buses. They're known 
for pickpockets. They're the ones with the door in the front and in the back. They're known for cell phone thieves and pickpockets. And that's almost any time of the day. I don't carry backpacks because I don't want to have, I, why do I need all that stuff? I, I'm just going out for the day. Now it's different if I'm going to go spend two or three days down in Pilcabamba or something like that. I'll take my little carry-on bag, you know, for that. But that's a different thing. You don't see me out walking around Cuenca every day with a backpack. And you see a lot of people with that. And that's fine, but it's something that's easy to put down and forget in a restaurant. Look away. It's easy enough for somebody to cut the strap and run off with it. And I don't want to paint the picture that there's crime happening all over the place. Because Cuenca, for the size of this city, half a million people, a little more, as compared to other cities here and in other countries, it's a very safe city. But crime exists, and this is how you avoid it. This is the mode of operation here. Now, there have been some reports of house break-ins, but um, I'll talk a little bit about where you live. First of all, wherever you live, be very careful with workers that you bring into your house, whether it's furniture movers, um, made to clean, a handyman to fix up a few things. You want to be real careful and know who you're getting. You want to have them vouched for. And I don't mean vouched for by another gringo that used them and everything was great and good. I mean, that's all right. But try to get somebody recommended by a, a local that you can rely on. They're willing to take a little responsibility in that recommendation because they're going to know usually a little bit better. It's the way I've operated and I haven't had any problems. You don't until you do. But for me, that's what works. Location is everything. For example, there was no way in hell I would have a house or an apartment in the Fiera Libra area simply because it's known for a lot of criminals. I don't want to live around the terminal area for the same reason. But there's, there's areas all over town that are, that are relatively safe. Now, you can be in a building with security. Uh, I lived in one for a year. And it's very nice and convenient, and you certainly feel safe. They have to get through security and, and some other locked doors and, and that sort of thing before they can ever get to your place. On the other hand, you, you're separating and isolating yourself from the rest of the world. And you might think, well, that's okay because I'm only going to be there when, when I'm up there, and then I go, when I go out, I'm, you know, I'm out with the rest of the world. Yeah, there's some truth to that. But if you think that you're going to be out and walking around all the time, it's not really realistic. There's going to be a lot of days when you just want to be home, you want to read, you want to uh, kick back, you got laundry to do, whatever it is. So you're not going to be out every day. And those apartment buildings can be kind of isolating. So it's something to think about. I definitely recognize that. And a lot of people that will be in those buildings end up moving out of the buildings be because of that. And they also realize that um, you're going to pay a lot more for that and why it's almost like burning money. But it can be safe. Get to know your neighbors. If you have an apartment, you have a house, know your neighbors because that's your best line of uh, defense. Where I live, the neighbors all look out for each other. Now, of course, on the other hand, the town that I live in there's virtually no crime. There's no pickpockets. There's, there's no crime. Uh, <clears throat> because the whole town would chase somebody down and give them a beat down for it. it it's very socially controlled. Um, the people take care of things themselves. And um, so where I live, it's very safe. But in Cuenca, it's good to know your neighbors because they can watch out for you, just like you can watch out for them. Do you want to live in a high-rise? I mentioned that. You want to live in a house, you want to live in an apartment. Apartment is probably the least safe of the three. Now, break-ins happen at houses too, but in Cuenca, you're going to see most of your houses have high walls, broken bottle, glass up on the top, maybe on top of that, an electrified fence, um, bars on the windows and doors. Uh, most houses are pretty secure, and you can add to that. You can put motion sensors and that kind of thing. 
uh, introduce yourself to the police and get on a speed dial thing because 911 isn't, well, I won't go into that. That's another issue. But um, the police response is extremely good from what I understand. A house can be a very safe situation if you're in the right neighborhood, you get to know your neighbors, and you're, you're conscious of security. An apartment, on the other hand, has access from other people. Somebody knows somebody who knows somebody can be in that apartment building, <clears throat> and that puts you more at risk. You're not directly in control of people who are kind of walking around, so it's something to think about. City, the most dangerous, maybe. Country, could be the most dangerous. As a gringo, if you move, buy a house, or you're renting a place in the country that doesn't have the security walls and all those things, and you're away from uh, police and neighbors or a mile down the road, it gets to be known that you're there, and if they have some idea that you've got some nice furniture and TVs and that kind of thing, what a juicy target. Because you're going to be out there, you're going to be defenseless, and the couple home invasions that I've read about in the past year took place in areas like that. So it's something, something to think about. Um, Small town, probably the safest. Like, like where I live, I know other small towns around are, are very similar. And Cuenca is probably, uh, in the city, I would say is middle of the road. But overall, if you just use a little caution, use a little care, um, don't set yourself up for failure, you should be fine. I haven't experienced any crime myself. Um, few people do. And so... Um, Hope this helped you out. See you at the Super Bowl. You know you could.